What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In the super quick guide, I'll be showing you how to migrate a save from vRising locally to a dedicated server. So assuming you've played it solo or with friends using the LAN mode or even online, you can migrate your save game to your own dedicated server, whether you're hosting it on the same computer, a different computer, a VPS, or even a dedicated hosting platform like the ones that you can rent servers from in-game. There's no extra hassle or converting required. Let's go ahead and do it now. So, first of all, we'll need to navigate across to wherever your save game is for V Rising. You'll find a path in the description down below, as well as the written article there too, that you can copy it from. We'll hold start or the flag key and hit R to bring up this little run dialog. Copy and paste the line in from the description or the article linked down below that looks something like this. User profile, app data, local low, stuntlock studios, V Rising cloud saves. Now, assuming you've played this game in your system before, you can hit OK and it'll open up a new file browser taking you straight across to all of your different save games. You may see one or more Steam ID here. Simply open the only folder in here if you're the only account playing it on your system. Otherwise, there'll be a few different accounts. Most people is just one, so I'll skip over this and we'll open up this folder. In here, you'll find V3. Opening this, you'll find all of your different save games on your current system. If you've only been playing on one world, then this is going to be super simple for you. Open up the folder and here's all of your different checkpoints, game settings, player data, etc. Everything you need is in this folder here. And this is what we'll be copying to our dedicated server or hosting platform. If for some reason you have multiple saves here, as you've created multiple worlds, simply sort by date modified and find the correct one. It should most likely be the last modified one or last played on one. What we'll do is we'll copy this entire folder with the very long name and we'll be pasting it into our dedicated server. You may be uploading it to the dedicated server platform or if you've installed it locally like I have in my previous guide, which you'll find linked down below, you'll need to navigate across to your server's files. So I'll right click vRising dedicated server, manage and choose browse local files. This is all of the dedicated server files, including my start server.bat file here that we created in the previous video. What we'll do is we'll navigate into save hyphen data, which should exist in this folder unless you've specifically set a different folder to save game files to. I'll assume it's saved here just to save extra hassle and we'll open up the saves folder inside of this, then V3. In this folder, you'll likely only see world one. What we'll do is we'll paste in the folder with the super long name and all of our save data inside of it. Now that we've copied this save game to our server, running it, we'll still see the old or a default map on it. In order to tell our server to use this specific save game, we need to edit one or two different files. So we'll head all the way back to vRising dedicated server and we'll find our start server.bat or whatever you may have called it. We'll right click and choose edit or open this with any text editor. And in here, you'll be looking for save name. By default, it'll say something like world one, for example. What we need to do is copy and paste the folder name in here as such. Once we've done this, you can save it and close it. Now, assuming you're hosting it on a web hosting platform, such as the one that you can rent servers from in game, you may not have the option of customizing a bat file directly. Instead, you may have different arguments set up somewhere on the website in a control panel or something like that. But odds are, maybe it's just inside of the config files that this is set and it's not set a second time as launch arguments in this file here simply override ones that are set in our different configuration files. To change your configuration files, open vRising server underscore data, then streaming assets, settings, and in here you'll see game settings, which allows you to customize PVP or PVE, change spawn rates, drop rates, etc. But what we're interested in is server host settings. Open this with any text editor. I'm using Sublime Text here. And what we're looking for is save name. Once again, this will appear as world one. The first time you open this up, all you need to do is copy and paste in the actual folder name as such. When we save this, we're now completely set up. And the next time we start up our server, it should use this save game over here. You can use this to hop between different save games, your friends and things like that, as long as you copy and paste them into the previous save game folder. With that, all you need to do is fire up your server. So I'll run the start server.bat file, for example, and we can fire up the actual game itself to join our server and see our progress. Let's go ahead and do that now. So on the main menu, I'll head across to play, followed by online, then show all servers, and you should see your server pop up at the very top if you're running it on the same computer that you're playing this game on. Otherwise, you may need to search for the name or you could join it directly using Direct Connect at the very bottom and punching in the ID here. For me though, I'll click it here and choose Join Game. Then I'll enter the password that I set previously and as soon as we connect, you should see that as soon as we get in, everything should be left the way that it was while we were playing on our offline slash single player server on our own computer. 
That being said, if you are playing LAN with friends or something like that, all of the save game data should be transferred across as well, as it's all saved inside of that one folder. Unlike PAL World, there's no conversion necessary or anything like that. The save game system is super simple and it just works. So with that, you now know how to transfer your saves to dedicated servers from an offline save. And of course, you can use the exact same method that I showed you to copy and paste worlds between different dedicated servers, back them up, etc. Anyways, hopefully this video helped you. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.